pull someone's leg to supersize your business. This is a teddy bear. Not sure it's a someone, but someone something's leg. This idiom's been around for a long, long time. There's there's some controversy over where it actually came from. To pull someone's leg, uh, there's some belief that it had to do with hangings in Britain in a place called, it starts with a T, Tybian or Tyburn, Tyburn, I don't know how to pronounce it. Anyway, they, they believe that in suspension hangings, which supposedly it takes people longer to die when you hang them by suspending them versus when you have them drop out of a, a block or something where you pull the block or the feet out from under them. Uh, way more about hanging than I've ever thought of in my life. But supposedly it takes longer to die, so they hired people to hang on the legs of the victims so that they would die faster. Now, there's no documented proof of this, so we don't know if it's true or not, but it makes for a good story. Also, there's some other possible causes in Scotland. Uh, they thought it was meant to make a fool of someone, which might be closer to the truth in that it actually pulls someone's leg means to to lie to them. To me, it's lying or to fool them into doing something. There was also a story about how in the medieval times, people would trip people or pull on their legs to knock them to the ground and then they could rob them. And again, no documented proof of this, not that they kept great records back in the day. So we're not sure, but it did appear in 1821 in the diary of James Gallatin or something. But there's lots of possible sources of the information, but whether they're true or not is up for us to decide, or does it really matter? I don't know if it matters where pull someone's leg came from. How we use it is what matters, and how do we use it in our business? Well, as I was researching this one, I came across an article about 10 telltale signs that you know someone's lying or not being forthright or honest or telling you the truth. And I, I want to share all of them, but it, it gets kind of long-winded, so I'm not sure that I will. And you have to decide, just like everything else, whether the person that, just because we're using one of these signs, because I guarantee I've used all 10 of them, not with the intention of lying or deceiving, but just in everyday activity and conversation. So you have to decide whether someone is being truthful or not. And guess what? We all have intuitively within us like a little radar detector or a, I like to call it spidey sense, whether somebody is being honest with us or telling the truth or not. If there's, there's, you know, body language, there's the way, this is different ways that people phrase things, which I think is really powerful because I remember when I first heard one of these, it was about when you use, uh, Sentences like, well, to be honest, then people think that you've been lying up until then. And I never, I never assumed that. I never would have thought that at all. So now every time I say something like, to be honest or to tell you the truth, I cringe a little bit on the inside because I'm like, well, was I being honest before? Well, yeah. But usually I say it in a way that I'm revealing more than I normally would reveal. Maybe I'm being vulnerable about something or telling a story that I'm kind of uncomfortable telling, but I'm going to tell it anyway. And so I might use a qualifier like that. So what are some of these 10 telltale phrases that indicate, or actually it's 10 strategies people use to lie and deceive you. Uh, and you have to decide whether that's what they're actually doing or, and, and I, I was thinking about these today as I was sharing them in uh, this year's challenge about um, the question. One of the questions today of our two questions was, is it ever okay to lie? And that's what led me into the looking for what are the advantages of lying? Why do people lie? What are the disadvantages of lying? And there are, there are reasons, you know, to not be fully disclosing of everything, right? We've got confidentiality agreements for a reason. There's things that we don't want to share with everybody, especially our competition sometimes. So what are some of these phrases? Number one, stalling tactics. You might say something like, you know, they'll put off answering your questions. You ask somebody a direct question and they'll you'd say something like, well, do you think I did that? And they're, they're not answering the question, right? But they're also just trying to buy time into thinking about well, what are they going to say? How are they going to get out of this one? Uh, skipping interactions. I thought this was an interesting one because I'd have to think if I, I'm sure people have used this on me, but I didn't know it. I didn't know it. I use contractions all the time, but people will skip contractions when they want to emphasize what they're saying. I did not do that. And I could think of people telling me that when I knew actually that they did something that was absolutely a lie, but they would say, I did not do that with emphasis, thinking that if they just said, I didn't do that, 
You know, you can tell there's a big difference between I didn't do that and I did not do that. Uh, number three, making sweeping statements like I would never or I always tell the truth, things like that. Number four, overemphasizing their trustworthiness. And this is the one that gets me because it's like phrases like to be honest, to tell the truth. Let me be clear. The fact is, and then they'll go on to justify actually why they lied. Number five, uh, hedging their statements. As far as I recall, da, 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 da. You know, I've definitely heard that in, in, uh, in, in the courtroom before and in negotiations. Number six, uh, they'll avoid I statements. They will, they will use general, uh, conversations. They'll say most people or other people or something, but they won't say I when they're talking about whether they did or didn't do something. Number seven, uh, they'll dodge the direct question. Well, do you think I would do something like that? Number eight, uh, going into defensive mode. Have we ever experienced that? Like all the time. Uh, and they'll say things like, how can you doubt me? Number nine, and they try, they try to actually push it back on you and make you feel like there's something wrong with you. Obviously had lots of experience with liars and dishonest people. Sad but true, but that's how I learned that it, honesty is always the best policy. Why would you lie? And I think it was more interesting to read articles on the reasons for being honest and telling the truth, because I can relate to those, than lying. But I probably learned more by reading this one. Uh, number nine, deflecting and evading. Uh, they'll... They'll try to distract you and deflect you from from directly asking them the question about are they telling the truth or not. They will say, well, don't you have anything better to do? Why are you paying attention to this? What business is it, of, is it of yours? What do you care? Things like that. And then finally, number 10, they'll embellish insignificant things and they'll sweep over or sweep under the rug really, really important things. And I think of this in different conversations I've had with people, but we see it, we're seeing it in our world all around us all the time right now. Social media and the media in general, mainstream media now is making a huge issue out of things that if we really think about them, they're absolutely positively, well, they're made up, they're BS and they're not important at all, but they're deflecting us from the things that they don't want us to know because they don't think we're smart enough to handle it. And that's really it's quite pathetic. I'm really sad about journalism these days because I went to journalism school for a while. <laughs> uh, and I'm so glad I didn't take that career path. Uh, but they'll embellish little things. And, and there's so many things. Just watch the news and you'll see all the things that they're talking about. It's like why they focus on the negative because it gets more attention. But is our world really 99.9% .9 negative? Not in my life, not in your life probably either. But the media would have us believe that Everyone's at each other's throats and that we all hate each other. That's absolutely nonsense. And they do it for a reason and we forget that their reason might not be our reason. And so I think the whole point of all of this, pulling someone's leg, to me, pulling someone's leg is more in a joking manner. Uh, but it does tie into our topic of lying and not being honest, not telling the truth. I'm going to say right out. If you're building and supersizing your business, you better build it on a solid foundation of honesty, integrity, not going along with what's going on in the media or politics, because that is going to kill your business. Might get you a little poof of business for a while, but are you really attracting the people that you want to base your business on? That's always my question. Uh, do I want to say something about this particular topic or this thing that's going on in the, in the world right now? Or is it really got nothing to do with me and my business because most of it has nothing to do with me, my business, or growing and building and supersizing my business. That's it for today. Love to know your take on pulling someone's leg. Have you ever pulled someone's leg? I uh, went through a phase where I liked jokes and, and practical jokes, but I'm not very good at them. So I decided to be honest and true to myself. I'm not a joke teller. Or I'm not a trickster, so I'm not going to be one. All right, that's it. Have an awesome day. And I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.